tells us there is a time and a season for everything under heaven, under the sun. There is a time and a season for everything. There's a time to die, a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to joy. He goes through and makes the list just in case we're not sure about it. There's a time when God wants to do things in our life. And sometimes we think that when the difficulty is here, that it's not the time that God is doing something in our life. Are you ready? Winter comes to prep things for spring. Hard times comes to prep you for great things. How can God trust you with great things if you cannot be accountable with the things he has already given you? Scripture makes this statement. Uh, it, at one place it says, How can you contend with a horseman if the footmen have wearied you? What does that mean? In essence, it says, why do you want to go any faster if you can't handle where you are? Why do you want more of God if you can't handle what God has given you? Well, I just want more. To whom much is given, we like the giving. Keep it on me, God, your blessings. What are the blessings for? The blessings are so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. Blessings are not to heap up on ourselves, to build new storehouses, to do those things. Why is evangel blessed in different areas? So that we can be a blessing to other people. So that we can reach out to other people. Larry and I are leaving Monday week to go to South Africa. We'll be there for about 10 days looking at ways that we can be a blessing to other people. We'll be ministering to thousands of people. I think they're setting up chairs for around 5,000 that we're going to be doing crusades with and then leadership training and everything. Why are we going? Just to go over and have a great trip? No. We are going because we believe that where we send money, we need to know what's going on and we need to find a fresh vision so that God, He blesses us. We cannot have to wonder where does God want us to send this money to. We know where we're supposed to go. You see, as we sat there that day, or as I sat there, there was a passage of Scripture, and it was so pronounced to me that this was the first coffee cups we ever made as evangel. First ones. This used to be our logo right here, just the way it is. And this passage was so pronounced in my spirit that I came back, and I told him, I said, I want this passage put on coffee cups so that whenever people sit down in the mornings or wherever they are and they drink their coffee or even if they pass it on to somebody else or different things, that they can re be remembered that God has a plan for them and sometimes the plan is not on our timing. Amen. On the back of this is Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 3. And it reads like this. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Today, I want to talk to you and remind you it's worth the wait. Can we pray? Father, today, as I minister this message and, and I speak the words that you have given me, I believe, Lord, that through the song and through the different things that are going on, you have prepped this people for this message now. Not later, but I felt in my spirit stop everything. It is now. It is a now moment. 
So, Father, I pray today that as I speak, you will give me the voice of the prophet to speak into their lives for the future that is out there. Lord, I don't want to add anything or I don't want to take anything away. I want to speak only what you would have to say. And, Lord, as you said in your word, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In Christ's name, amen. In Habakkuk, we find this prophet, and he's walking around and he's looking at everything that is going on. God speaks something into his life, and it holds some things that I believe are important for us today. I believe there are some very important issues that you need to understand, and they are simple principles that will take you a long way. I'm a very simplistic person. I, I, don't, I don't like to cloud things up a lot. I think we need to just be able to understand it and walk out of here and be able to apply it. In Habakkuk, God is dealing with Habakkuk, and he starts out with a question. And this is what he does. He says, I will take my stand, chapter number 2. I'll tell you, let's start. I want to read chapter 1 and verse 1 there. It says, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help and you will not hear? Has anybody ever been there before? O Lord, how long am I going to cry for help and like you're not going to listen? He goes on and he says, or cry violence. Lord, I'm getting beat up here. Violence. And will you not save? Why do you make me see iniquity? And why do you idly look at wrong? Now, we may not say it out loud, but these are some of the questions we've had, I believe. Why are you doing this? Why are you... Thump their ever-loving lights out, God. Slap them upside the head. Get their attention. Do something. Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arise. The law is paralyzed. And justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. So justice goes forth perverted. What he's saying is that nothing is working. Have you ever been in your life when it seems like everything you touch is falling apart justice isn't working the justice of God you're like the scripture really I read it but it doesn't work come on I'm saying things that I think that all of us have been there I've stood out in my backyard at times looking up at the sky in a very profound religious moment really So that's it? You're not going to, like, do anything? And how many of you know sometimes the most powerful voice of God is the silence of God? Wow. What do you mean? I want God to come down and shake me. Thus saith the Lord God. I will knock their lights out. You will not have to worry. Your washing machine will never break. <laughs> Brendan and I got up yesterday morning, getting ready to go to an event. Turn the washing machine on. It fills with water and stops. <laughs> really? I'm going to cook hamburgers for people for you. And you won't even let my washing machine work? Can we get real in the house today? I was. I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm going to go cook these hamburgers with a joyful heart. <laughs> I was trying to help in the parade the other day. Karen Jesse drives by me. All I'm doing is trying to get cars to go. That's it. I volunteer. I help. I'm trying to be a nice guy standing out there. I get cussed. 
almost run over. No lie. Doug, where were you? <laughs> I'm going to have you beside me next time. I told him, I said, it's a good thing I wasn't packing today. I, I think God would have understood when they cussed me like they did. And then I'm thinking, okay, chill. home. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Kumbaya, kumbaya. And then I get somebody that gets in my face. I'm trying to talk to them. And everything was good till they stuck their hand in my face and gave me the. I took off my religious coat. <laughs> I said, so that's the game you want to play. Let's go. I get down with you. <laughs> I had Mike Hodges. I said, no, here's one of my buddies, Sheriff. He sees us going at it. After it's over, he goes, Preacher, you've got to quit arguing with people out in the street. <laughs> yeah. He couldn't have called me LeVon. He called me Preacher. <laughs> God is sometimes silent. Sometimes it seems like the wicked are prevailing. Sometimes it seems like we do everything right. And for every three, three things we do right, there's 1,200 things it seems like that goes wrong. But I'm here to tell you today, that does not stop the vision of God for you, this community, or this church. God is not limited by what other people do. He is God. Habakkuk is standing there and he goes, okay, God, like, really? You're not going to do anything about this? And then all of a sudden, God begins to speak to him and he, he talks to him about all the things that are going on. And then Habakkuk in chapter number 2, it says, I will take my stand at my watch post and station myself on the tower and look to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. So you see, it was a complaint. And the Lord answered me, write the vision. Make it plain on tablets so that he may run who reads it. For the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. If it seems slow, Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. The first thing that I want you to see today, and I tried to make these as simplistic as possible so that you can grab them. My goal today is, as the scripture said, make it plain so that he who runs can read it. I want it to be plain. So if someone runs by, they're kind of like, yep, I've got this. Maybe you're just here for a moment in your mind and you're running a race in your mind right now. You're already at... Win Dixie or Walmart buying groceries after you come out of here or figuring out what restaurant you're going to go to. I'm going to try and make it plain so that he who runs can read it. Number one, you've got to get above the issue. Get above the issue. Everybody say that with me. Get above the issue. Where are you getting? Above. I can almost see Habakkuk here walking around the city, looking at all that's happening, seeing all of the different things that are going on. He sees how his nation has turned its back on God, how evil is, is walking about, and how evil it seems like is doing good. And as he talks with God about what is happening, God answers his complaint, but it's not the answer he wanted. God gave Habakkuk just as he will with many of us, a revelation and not an explanation. We want an explanation. God is trying to reveal something and not explain it. Revelation is many times something we have to find. Explanation is something we get. 
I'm going to say that again. A revelation is sometimes what we have to find. An explanation is something we get. We want an explanation. God was telling Habakkuk. He tells him a little bit further down. He says in chapter 1 in verse 5, the latter part of it. He says, I am doing a work in your days that you would not believe if I told you. I want you to listen to me where you are today. Some of you are so caught up with so many different things that are going on. And so many things you are focused on that are negative. Things that are happening that are impacting you in a negative way. Things that it seems like about the time you get on a good track. Someone comes in and puts up a detour sign or even a stop sign. Or digs a major hole in the road. And you've got to wait for the bridge to be built. Some of you feel like that. You're looking, you're going along, everything's great. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. I'm so happy. You're singing the anthem song of Duck Dynasty. I'm just happy, happy, happy. That's, that's where you're at in a lot of your life. And then all of a sudden you come to this place and you go, whoa, wait a minute. Everything was good. What's this? It's a hold up. I'm stopping. Why, why can't I go any further? God, where are you? Everything was good. I was in church Sunday. I even came to prayer, passionate prayer, and I felt passionate. <laughs> I usually just come to prayer, but I felt passionate this time. Lord, I sang today. I've actually been to service three times in a row. Let the glory fall on me, God. And all of a sudden, there's this hole in the road. You see, as long as you focus on the wrong, you will never see the right. The vision is for an appointed time. You cannot make it happen any faster. God will send you down roads that you do not want to go down. And many times the issue is not about the issue. It's about God trying to reveal some things inside of us that need to be taken care of so that the vision can come to pass at the time it is needed. If you continue to rebel against what God is telling you, you will never get to the complete of the vision in your life. We must humble ourselves in the sight of God. We must lay down our rights. Well, I have the right this. You have the right to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that's it. God will give you what is needed when it needs to happen. But you have to quit clouding the issue. Well, this is about my wife or this is about my husband. No, it's not. You get you right, let God take care of the rest of it. Amen. Most of the time, it's about us getting ourselves in line and then God moving on the other individuals. I pray that God will change them. Have you ever prayed for yourself? I tell people a lot of times in counseling, I tell them, look... We can talk about all these issues and you can talk about how wrong this individual is and about how wrong that individual is and about how much you've been hurt and all that type of stuff. The question is, what are you doing with it? Are you allowing that to cloud what you see? Sometimes we can't come in and even hear God because we are allowing the other voices to be so loud that we cannot even hear God if he was to yell at us with a megaphone to his mouth. You can't cloud the issue. You see, it was in this place of getting above it. Habakkuk didn't stay in the valley. He said, I went to my watchtower. That watchtower was the highest place that he could get to. He went there so that he could get alone and listen to what God was telling him. I'm here to tell you today, there is going to come some times in your life where you must lay down some things that are important to you so that you can get alone with God, so that you can get above God, where you are above the things to God. What you've got to do is say, these things doesn't matter 
You can sacrifice or you can fast some different things in your life. Fasting, we always think, is about food, and that is one of the areas. But I tell you something, one of the greatest ways you can hear from God is fast social media. Fast television. Fast, fast your uh, iPhone, iPad, Facebook, Twitter, all of those things. Say, I'm going to lay this down for a period of time, and where I would invest this, I'm going to get above these things that are going on, and I'm going to hear what God is saying to me. God is telling some of you today that you have been worrying about these things for so long. He has been trying to talk to you, but you keep staying down here. It is time to allow God to take you above those things and quit clouding the issue. God is working embrace it the second thing you need to understand is don't cloud the issue don't get above the issue and don't cloud the issue Habakkuk number 2 verse 3 says write the vision make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it chaos is many times the enemy's best friend now I want you to think about that chaos is the enemy's best friend. I've said this before, that if the enemy can't get you to slow down, he's going to put your foot to the gas pedal. When you get weary, how many of you know that your emotions are paper thin? Your emotions get to that point. When you're weary in areas, when you get tired in areas, that is when the enemy comes in and he begins to talk to you and whisper lies into your ear. He really messes everything up then. You know, well, they just don't like me. They just don't care about what's going on in my life. They just, you know, nobody calls me. Nobody loves me. I'm in this all alone. If God loved me, I wouldn't be going through this. The enemy is taking all of this chaos and he is making you lose sight of the reality that if God didn't love you, you wouldn't be feeling these things. What do you mean? God is always pulling you towards him and the enemy is telling you the lies that God doesn't love you. I'm here to tell you, some of you are sitting out here today and you're thinking, if God loves me, why am I going through this? It is because God loves you that you are going through some of these things. That's not a message we want to hear. We want to go, okay, would just somebody tell me how to get above this? It is because God loves you. It is because God is trying to work some things out of you. It is because God is trying to reveal some things that have held you back for a long time. You may have been in different churches. You may have been, this may be your second church, your third church, your first church, whatever. But many times we come into a congregation and we think that everything, this building and these people are going to make me whole. We can't do that. And you're going to walk out of here at times. And you're going to have your feelings rubbed. You're going to have your heart hurt. Other people, other believers are going to do things that hurt you at times. But God is speaking to you and he's saying, do you love me more than this issue? I have a vision for you. God has a vision for you. For this church. God has a vision for this youth group. For this children's ministry. For everything that is going on here. God has a vision. I look at it from this time. From way back here. We had at times to get above things. We, we had to get it. One of the people amen to me. The biggest is Jr. He's been with me here from the very beginning. There are times when I think all of us wanted to go. Okay forget it. Forget it. And all the different voices were coming in. The things and the people saying, you can never build a church there at the end of that road that goes into a dirt road. Nobody knows where you are. Do y'all realize that? Y'all are lost today. I'm glad you found us. You know, you must have just been. But through this time, we did not allow the things that have happened in the past 
the things that have been said about all of this, we did not allow it to cloud our vision. What we did is we said we are about loving God and loving people. Yesterday, we were out there loving on people. How were we loving on them? We were out there with two big grills going flipping hamburgers as fast as we could, serving them to people out there. Pastor, that was just cooking hamburgers. No, let me tell you, every time someone came up, we smiled at them. We told them to have a great day. We allowed the love of God to move through us. People are out there all the time going, why are y'all doing this? Because we love God and we love people. We must set the vision and make it clear so that the people who run can understand it. Now, when you say evangel, people do not go, oh yeah, that's the church at the end of the road. They go, I've heard about that church. I've heard about what they are doing in the community. It is not about us building ourselves up. It is about that every time we are out there, people understand we love God, we love people. God said, or Jeremiah said in chapter number 29 and verse number 11, he said, for I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. And not to harm you. Plans to give you, here you go, hope and a future. Some of you are here today and you feel as though you have no hope. Maybe your, your marriage is falling apart. Maybe your family, you've got children that have gone, gone crazy on you. Maybe it seems like every time that you think there's some stability in your life that it drops off. I'm here to tell you today, God has a plan for you. When Brenda and I first came to Evangel, we did not think that God would really have us here as long as we've been here. We thought that maybe this was a point in our ministry. But you know what our hopes have been and our vision has been? Since we came in and we saw a group of people that wanted to make a difference, people that were hungry, our vision has been now and will continue to be, God, help us grow people into a love for you that will make a difference in our community. Some of you are here today because somebody loved on you. Because somebody told you that they cared. Because somebody reached out to you and made a difference in your life. You see, you've got to get above the issues. You can't cloud the issues. And the last thing I want to tell you today is you've got to hold tight. Some of you, I, 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 this is where I feel that I really need to, to tell you today. There are some people here today that I believe are right at the point of throwing in the towel. Our team is coming at this time. You're right at the point of throwing in the towel. You've thought, God, if you love me, this wouldn't be happening. Habakkuk thought the same thing. Lord, why is this going on? Why is this happening? What did God tell him? He said, remember the vision I've given you. Remember the promises that I've given you. Remember the things that I've placed in your heart. Remember the time whenever you knew me like you've never known me before. He said, I want you to go back and I want you to rehearse the vision that I have given you. For some of you, when you stood wherever it was, either on a stage or out on the beach or wherever and you got married and you made those vows to each other and you looked at each other with love in your eyes now things are a little bit shaky God's telling you I want you to go back to the vision that you had when you got married I, I want you to go back and I want you to relive that Whenever you first came to Christ and you knelt before him and God put something in your heart that just began to, to stir you 
a passion for people, a vision to make a difference in some people's lives. And you get into ministry and you find out it's not everything it's cracked up to be because can I tell you, people in ministry are the same as people out there. They're, they're people. And sometimes they don't say the nicest things. And sometimes they have bad days too. And so you lost that vision. Listen to me. Not because God removed it. Because you allowed something to steal it from you. I'm going to say that again. You lost the vision not because God removed it. But because you allowed someone to steal it from you. You need to understand the vision is for an appointed time. Do not bail before the appointment is made or before it is fulfilled. That would be, that would be like me having an appointment to go to the doctor and having the time, walking in and going, I'm here, and then turning around and leaving and never letting the doctor see me. I had the appointment, but I didn't let it be fulfilled. And I walk out hurting the same way as when I went in. Break your leg, cut yourself, go to the doctor. Can you imagine cutting your, your hand and it just bleeding like crazy? And you knowing, man, I got to get to the doctor. And you go in there and you sit down and you know why you're there. You know why you're there. And then all of a sudden they do all the different things and they say, the doctor will see you now. Okay, thank you. I just wanted an appointment. And you walk out bleeding. Listen to me. That's what some of you are doing with God right now. Some of you just came and you got there. And then all of a sudden you bailed on the vision. God said, I've got something for you like you will never see before. There are still dreams in our heart. And we're going to talk about those in November. Dreams that scare me spitless. I mean, I think about them and I go, really? In Mariana, God? Here in this community that you want to do something like that? On that scale, on that degree? Yes, he does. But you know what holds the vision from being completed many times? It's not God. It's people. It's people. What would happen, and I want you to listen to me real carefully. What would happen? Let's say if, if everybody here, and there's a number of people that are out today. What would happen if everyone in here today recommitted themselves to the vision of God for this community? And you said it's not about me, God. I'll give, I'll give and I'll make it happen. I'll serve and I'll make it happen. I'll do whatever it takes to make it happen, God. Here I am. My resources, everything I am. Are you ready? We invest more in things that just sort of happen into our lives than we do the man who gave his life for us. I want to challenge you on something. This is something I had to do first. God spoke to me about some things. And I've got to live them before I can, before I can talk about them. I believe, the vision, I believe in this church. I believe in this community. And God began to speak to me about sacrificing something for him this year to show him that I was sincere about it. I've alluded to this, but today I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna let you know where I am. I'm not just asking you to do something, I'm doing it myself. One of the loves of my life is hunting. I love to hunt. I love to get out there and just enjoy 
the beauty of the things God has done. I love it. This year, I had more time prior to hunting season to get out and get everything ready. It is ready. A couple of weeks back, about a month ago, God began to deal with me. And he said, do you believe in the vision enough? Do you believe in me enough that you are willing to give up something you love for me? And I thought, sure. I thought he would talk about something else. He began to talk about my love for hunting. And he asked me, he said, would you give it up for me this year? Well, Lord, you next year right because you understand I've already spent a lot of time getting my food plots and back in there with tractors and everything I spent weeks back in there God he said no he said there is a vision that has an appointed time and I believe the appointment is getting even closer and he asked me he said would you give it up this year for me and I waited and waited because I thought, you know, like everybody else, you save up money till it comes time, you know, to pay for your part of the lease and everything like that. And I thought, you know, it'll be okay. God's just testing. And he's going to say, when I say, yeah, I'll do it, you know, he's going to go, okay, I just wanted to check. It's good. You can go ahead and hunt. He didn't say that. This year, because I believe in the appointment of the vision. I believe it is for an appointed time. And though it seems like we've just been able to grab hold of it, I believe it's out there. I want to ask you this year, the remainder of this year, from now through December, what would you give up that you love for God? What would you give up? You see, I believe with everything in me that we are on the brink of something big for God. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's an outpouring of His Spirit just in here, if it's something that is about to break into our community. I, I don't know what all it is. All I know is this, that way back then, God spoke to me and He said, the vision is for an appointed time. And though it tarries, it will not lie. I'll be honest with you. There's been times going, okay, God, you pulled my leg. Really? But he told me, he said, I want you to get above this thinking. I don't want you to let the issues cloud. And I want you to hold tight to the things that I promised you. Here's my question to you. What are you willing to give up for the vision of God in your life? Back it goes on at the very end. And after he's dialogued with God and after God has given him his answers, he comes back at chapter number 3. And in verse number 17, he says this. Though the fig tree should not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, the produce of the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, the flock be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will take joy in the God of my salvation. God, the Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet like the deer's. He makes me tread on my high places. Today, you got to get above it. You can't cloud the issues with everything else. And you've got to hold tight to the promises that God has for you. Where are you today? I'm going to ask them to come back and sing that song that they sang at the beginning. You are my shield, my portion, my deliverer my strong tower 
my very present help in time of need. Where are you today? Has the enemy tried to steal your vision? Can I tell you the wait is worth it? Waiting on God. He said in Isaiah, he tells us they that wait on the Lord will do what? Renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And he tells us, teach us, Lord, to wait. If you're here today and the enemy has been beating you up in your relationship with him, you feel like your, your vision of God and the things of God have just sort of diminished because of the things that have been going on today, I want to pray with you and I want to agree with you. When Kara begins to sing this song, that's you I want you to have the boldness to stand and come down here and I want us to pray with you today and believe God and remind you the wait is worth it where are you today from all over the building if that's you would you come and join me at the front this morning